Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next part is the pharynx. What happens at pharynx? So pharynx is a common passage for food and air. Now we take in air through our nostrils and we take in food through our mouth. Now when you take in food, the food goes into the oral cavity or the mouth cavity. From there it goes into the pharynx. Now when you take in air, it goes through your nostrils, then goes into the nasal cavity and then goes to the pharynx. So pharynx is a common passage for both food and air. So they, both of them would pass through the pharynx. But after going to pharynx, they will get bifurcated into two different routes. So if it is air, then it will be sent to the trachea, which is the windpipe. So here you see this bony structure which you see here. This is trachea or windpipe. Trachea is also called windpipe. And you see another pipe like structure which you can see here. That is nothing but the food pipe or the esophagus. So once the uh, food or the air enters the pharynx so the pharynx decides if it is food it is sent to the food pipe if it is air then it is sent to the wind pipe now any mistake in this in case by any chance if a small particle of food enters into the wind pipe that it can cause it, it can choke that person and it can even cause death so it can be that deadly so therefore the presence of pharynx is very very important because it actually decides which has to go which way so let's say uh, you have come out of your house now once you reach a, a, a junction from where if you take right you will reach your school and if you take left you will reach the shopping complex so that is the point where you have to decide which way you want to go whether you want to go right or left so similarly here also once the food or air reaches pharynx pharynx has to decide if it is food it has to be sent to food pipe if it is air it has to be sent to wind pipe or trachea so the food goes to the esophagus esophagus is nothing but the food pipe food pipe is also called esophagus and the air goes to trachea and trachea is nothing but the wind pipe so in this lesson we will be continuously talking about trachea so trachea lies in front of the esophagus so if you see they both lie just one behind another so wind pipe is on the front and the food pipe is present at the back of the wind pipe another important structure which is present here is called the epiglottis you know what is epiglottis as i said it is very important that food goes to food pipe and food doesn't enter into the wind pipe now how do we prevent it that food can not enter into trachea. So this prevention is done by this structure called epiglottis. So epiglottis prevents food from entering into the trachea or the windpipe. So it is a small cartilaginous flap of skin. So as you can see here, so this is epiglottis. You see a flap of skin here, brown colored structure. That is nothing but epiglottis. So it is like a, a door and the door remains closed whenever it is food. But whenever it is air, it opens up and it allows it to pass to the windpipe. So it is a cartilage, it is made up of cartilage and so small flap of skin. It prevents food from entering into the respiratory tract. Respiratory tract is nothing but the windpipe or the trachea. So presence of epiglottis press does a very useful job because this is a very critical thing. So epiglottis helps. So the next part is again a crucial part that is trachea which is also called as the windpipe. So this is the place or this is the tube like structure which provides a passage for air. So air passes from pharynx into this pipe. So from pharynx it gets into the trachea. Now what is the trachea or how does the trachea look like and what is it made up of? So if you look at the structure of trachea you see you, you will actually be able to see some ring like structures. So these rings are made up of cartilage and the presence of these cartilaginous rings prevents the collapsing of the trachea even if there is no air so you know it is it is kind of a tube so inside the tube if even if you don't have air 
it it shouldn't uh, like deflate so it should remain as it is and for that purpose we have these rings which are made up of cartilage so that the trachea doesn't collapse whether irrespective of whether air is there inside or not so that that's one thing about the structure of trachea the presence of cartilaginous ring so here this windpipe it extends up to the mid thoracic cavity so we are just talking about its location now now what do we mean by mid thoracic cavity what is thoracic cavity for that matter now if you look at our body you will actually see that it is divided into three different sections so basically this portion is the head correct and this portion between the head and the abdomen this portion is known as the thorax therefore this entire part is termed as the this entire cavity and all the organs present in in this space they are said to cover the thoracic cavity so thoracic cavity it is the division of an animal's body which is between the head and the abdomen so this is head and this is abdomen so between head and abdomen is the thoracic cavity so this trachea it extends up to mid thoracic cavity so you see this presence of this diaphragm there is a muscular structure here and this diaphragm it denotes the end of thoracic cavity so wherever you have this muscular structure you see this structure so this denotes the end of the thoracic cavity so the, here the thoracic cavity ends so mid mid of the thoracic cavity is where till which the trachea extends so the trachea extends up to the mid of thoracic cavity so that is the location of uh, trachea c shaped rings of cartilage present so as i said and these cartilage rings what do they do they provide support and rigidity therefore the trachea never collapses even if there is no air inside the trachea it will not collapse also internally the trachea is lined by cilia and mucus now whenever i talk about cilia and mucus cilia being th hair uh, tiny hair like structure they will always block the dust particles microorganisms germs and other foreign matter from getting inside so you see at every step of our respiratory system everywhere we have some filter mechanism so that we can block the entry of unwanted particles for example in the nostrils nasal cavity there also we had cilia we had mucus we had uh, tiny hair similarly here also you see here in case of trachea here also you have cilia you have mucus so everywhere this uh, uh, filters are present this protection are present so that uh, unwanted particles do not enter inside our lungs they should not reach our lungs and cause any kind of infection so runs from throat till the thoracic cavity so as i, as I said so that that's the location of the trachea i think which we have already this Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.